Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for April 3rd, 2023. Now, my voice still sounds pretty terrible, so bear with me here. We will be live tomorrow, so please be sure you have channel notifications on for the threat of another severe weather outbreak that could be possible throughout the majority of the central into eastern United States, so watch out for that. But we do have severe weather to talk about before then that starts with today so before we get started in the video please be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe if you are new now let's get started here as we take a look at the day one convective outlook for severe weather one out of fives on the severe weather scale across the board one for the southeast one for texas not too much if you guys live over there but let's move off into tomorrow to where we now have two four out of fives on the severe weather scale one of which is in a very familiar area another one which is a little bit further to the west than what was the uh, moderate risk area that we were looking at this past friday so uh, i recommend that if you are in the yellow orange or red and you are watching this here on tuesday april 4th you probably are going to want to watch out for significant severe weather both in the afternoon on Tuesday and in the overnight hours leading into Wednesday. So something to watch out for with that. Uh, the risks do include the threat for strong tornadoes in these environments. We have one up north once again. Uh, a 10% and a 15% chance for severe weather has been issued. I want to show you guys something really interesting. Note how sharply how sharply the cutoff is between the 5% chance, which is indicated in this brown, and the 10% and 15% chance for severe weather over here in portions of Iowa, Illinois, and northeastern Missouri. So something to watch out for that. That will be the first wave here of showers and thunderstorms there on Tuesday. And then we have another round of severe storms that are going to move overnight. Nocturnal tornadoes are possible here for portions of St. Louis down here into Springfield, Little Rock, all the way down to Fort Smith and the surrounding areas as well. So something to watch out for with that. Moving off over to the hail risk, we have a lot of dry air aloft, and I'll show you guys that later on in the models, but the substantial hail risk is because of that dry air, and because of that, we have the threat for significant hail in some of these areas, at least in with some of these storms that do end up forming and sustaining. So two inch size hail or greater is possible within some of these storms. And then I also want to mention the wind risk. This will be a more of a uh, factor as stuff starts to translate from Tuesday into Wednesday, heading off into Wednesday. And as we uh, talk about Wednesday, I also want to talk about the threat for damaging winds here as we move off into Wednesday. We see we have a 2 out of 5 on the severe weather scale here for portions of the Great Lakes into the Ohio River Valley. We can also probably include portions of Ontario and southern Quebec. So if you're in areas like Toronto, you guys are probably going to want to watch. Maybe even Ottawa, you guys are probably going to want to watch as well. So it's just something that you guys should probably watch out for. Detroit, Indianapolis, Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, Wheeling, uh, Pittsburgh, and uh, even Buffalo, you guys are probably all going to want to watch out for the threat of severe weather here on Wednesday. So now we're going to start out with something that we always start out with when we look at models. That's the 500 millibar wind shear, which is our jet stream, big jet stream that's going to move on through the area. And we're looking at winds six kilometers above ground level, so very high. And you can see that we have a big trough that's going to be dipping on through here into portions of the Rockies. This is going to start to eject off into some of the areas of the Midwest and into the Ozarks. And as this continues to move on through, you can see exactly that here in the afternoon into the early evening hours. Very strong wind shear here across portions of our northern moderate risk. So something interesting to note there, we have good ventilation within some of these storms. But as this continues to move on through into the overnight hours as well, note that wind shear not only starts to increase up north, but we also have some pretty substantial wind shear over here into portions of our second moderate risk, which is where the potential for some of our strong tornadoes can also exist. So two areas to watch. We've got some good wind shear aloft. Meanwhile, at our low level jet, which is our 850 millibar wind shear, 
This is uh, about one kilometer above ground level, if you will, which is where our winds are. We have some pretty strong winds here with our low level jet over our first moderate risk. So something to watch out for with that. But I also want you to take a note at our isobars here. You see how they are kind of bending here in some of these areas? This is our warm front, all right? This is right along where our vorticity axis can be. Anything that can form near the warm front or on the warm front is probably where our significant tornadoes is going to exist. So uh, something to watch out for within all these storms is how close it is to the warm front. If it does have a storm that's forming along the warm front, can it do something? Other than that, can storms form south of the warm front? If it can't, then you're probably not going to get a whole lot beyond the warm front. But that is something to note. We have some forms of vorticity existing here at the 850 millibar level. And as this continues to move on through into the overnight hours, look at our low level jet really start to rake. And you can see that along this line here, which is going to be our dry line, a very weird dry line setup that is going to be setting up overnight usually this happens during the day but it's happening overnight in this instance and we have some very strong wind shear associated with it which can cause some explosive showers and thunderstorms to form here in the overnight hours as well so something to note and we can uh, kind of take a look at our vorticity here our helicity values if you will uh, by looking at this this is our storm relative helicity from zero to three kilometers above ground level and you notice right here along our warm front this is where there's a lot of helicity, but you also have a little bit of helicity that starts to leak out towards the south of our warm front, which could potentially hint into some of our storms to potentially try to form there, or if they do sh form, I should say, could they potentially take advantage of it and become tornadic? So something to kind of note as that moves on through. And then as we head into the overnight hours, well, you can already see how helicity values are starting to rake up over here in the portions of Missouri, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. And you can see our dry line that is starting to slap in behind and create some more of a wind, hail, and tornado threat. Our dew points further emphasize this as we look in from Tuesday morning into Tuesday afternoon. Very warm and rich dew points across the board over into some of these areas in portions of Iowa, Illinois, and northeastern Missouri. You can see we have dew points in upwards of about 60 to even 70, but it's not as high in some of these other areas south of it, which means that some of these other storms could try to be a little bit more elevated in some of these areas. So something to watch out for. It's got to be the stuff that's out in front and high dew point content right in these areas, specifically in Iowa, northeastern Missouri, and portions of Illinois. It's got to be in this environment. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to do it at all. Meanwhile, I want to back up our dew points here because look at this entire band of dry air that's going to be surging on through. And this is going to aid to our dry line. This is what's going to set a lot of these storms off overnight and become a nocturnal threat. So watch this. Boom. Look at how quickly they race. You can see it's being forced by our cold front here. And this will more than likely lead to some storms forming overnight here sometime around midnight into one, maybe two o'clock. And this is going to lead to our nocturnal significant tornado threat that could exist for portions of uh, extreme eastern Oklahoma heading into western and central Arkansas and into south central Missouri. Something to kind of watch out for with all of that. Aided by the fact that we have an abundance of CAPE or convective available potential energy, which is essentially our warm air rising and our cold air sinking in the atmosphere, the greater the displacement between the two can indicate more energy for thunderstorms to form or sustain, and we have an abundance of it. Look at this over here in Iowa and Illinois. We have over 4,000 to approaching 5,000 joules per kilogram of CAPE here in this environment, and this is going to continue to sustain in a lot of this environment until storms end up just using it all. And there can be some instances to where storms don't even use all of it. That's uh, kind of our issue here, as we mentioned. Can storms form there to begin with? Can we get something to form within that very conditional risk? That's going to be the main contributor there. But overnight, you can also see down south, a lot of energy is present in this environment too. And when storms do form along that dry line, which you can see starts to move on through and ingest a lot of that energy, that is where our storms will begin to form and begin to stain and maybe even become significant. So something to watch out for with that. But another thing to watch out for is how much dry air there is aloft. Look at this here, guys. 
we're talking at 21 z which is about four or five o'clock and our relative humidity values aloft is very low we're talking below 50s in some spots there's only some areas where it isn't but there is a lot of dry air aloft and because of that uh the atmosphere is really going to favor some very large hail and potentially even some strong damaging winds overnight for some of these areas so watch out for that a lot of dry air means that uh, storms or i should say hailstones uh, are able to percolate a lot more and become large and expansive and so uh, because of that we can expect rapid growth in a lot of those areas in regards to hail so something to note with all that dry air law very very expansive in this area so what are we talking about with timings well let's move on through you can see here we've got a bit of snow in portions of north dakota south dakota wyoming montana and minnesota so the more things change the more they stay the same for you all but as things continue to progress here from tuesday into tuesday afternoon look at that we had one storm that formed into several and they all just kind of cluster and sit around each other and that's not really all too conducive in my honest opinion for strong tornadoes you need one that can kind of get by itself similar to kind of that one right there see that storm that's pretty large and expansive but it's not near any of the other ones those are the types of storms that are going to be able to produce your strong tornado so something to watch out for with that we also might see another storm or two that starts to form across in this general environment but that really may not be your uh, big significant tornado producer it might be a little bit more of an elevated hailer but something to watch out for potentially a chance for a tornado up north over there meanwhile you see a lot of these storms form down here into the portions of illinois missouri and portions of arkansas those are going to be the ones that are going to try to produce tornadoes as well as the stuff that is along this line right here this dry line and the storms that form out in front of it are going to be the ones that are going to try to produce your significant tornado so something to watch out for and notice how it starts to form i'll backtrack to when it starts to form at around 12 o'clock to one o'clock the line back here starts to form and you get storms that form even a little bit before that we'll go back and you can see they don't start to become expansive until 10 o'clock or even 11 o'clock for that matter so something to note and that's the reason why there is probably a good chance that i will be live twice i'll have one live stream for the one event and then i'll have another live stream for the other event which is going to be that's going to be hitting at two different time periods so something to watch out for if you're in the nocturnal threat we're talking missouri oklahoma arkansas northeastern texas northern louisiana eastern kansas you guys are going to want to watch out for the threat of nocturnal tornadoes something that is very serious because a lot of people are usually asleep by that time so i advocate for you guys if you haven't already to get weather radios if you have a weather radio make sure they are turned on otherwise have emergency alert notifications on so that your phones may be able to allow you guys to realize that if there are significant storms moving into your area you guys will be the first ones to know now the threat from Tuesday night into Wednesday morning will continue to linger and they will continue to be sporadic as they head off through into Wednesday afternoon. You can see our line from our dry line and or cold front at this point will start to move on through. Now watch, we also have some storms that form out in front of this which could potentially try to produce tornadoes as well. So stuff along the line and stuff in the storms in front do have a chance to produce a tornado or two. So something to note with all that but if you guys remember we had all that dry air aloft and that dry air is going to allow a lot of forcing to come down to the ground it'll produce some very strong damaging winds and there's a good chance that we will see a pretty widespread threat for damaging winds with hurricane force winds expected in some of these areas so watch out if you are over into portions of the ohio river valley uh, Ontario and maybe even into portions of Appalachia. One final thing that I do want to mention here is we do have some excess moisture that is going to exist into the Pacific Northwest so once again flash flooding will be a threat here and then we'll also have flash flooding to be a threat for some of these areas where repeated showers and thunderstorms could exist which is practically the majority of the area that we're going to be talking about here for Tuesday into Wednesday. So something to watch out for with all of that now realistically nothing is surefire here so 
that's what the live streams are for. We're going to try and make sure that you guys know what's going on. I usually would be a lot more in depth with these, you know, types of videos as we get closer to the event, but you can hear that I'm not audibly correct here at this moment. So trying to rest that a little bit before we get into action and hopefully you guys understand. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family on the social media. Also follow me on social media. Link will be in the description down below. Stay safe, everyone. I will catch you guys for our live streams tomorrow. So make sure you guys don't miss it. Peace out, everyone.